Due to popular demand, Logan Bruno got his own Babysitter's Club book. The cover shows Logan getting into a fight with football jerk at the health fair, but let's be honest, it looks like Logan is fighting with his twin brother. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. This book was written by Peter Lorangis. We start with Logan at football practice. He jokes around with his buddies and Mary Ann comes to pick him up. Logan talks about Mary Ann in such glowing terms, it makes me wish I was dating her. Logan's dinner that night is interrupted by a Babysitter's Club emergency. Christy asks him to come to a club meeting right away. Then we get two full chapters of recap about the Babysitter's Club. Ugh, I normally skip the recap chapters because they're super boring, but I read them this time because I wanted to get Logan's perspective on these girls. Let me tell you, I was not disappointed when he described Claudia. Claudia looks like a model. Her skin is perfect and she has these gorgeous almond-shaped eyes. She also has a really hip, sexy way of dressing. Okay, time out. Let me say right here that I am just describing. Marianne is my girlfriend, but that doesn't mean I can't say positive things about someone else's looks. Alright, that's all I wanted to say. Didn't want you to worry. Logan totally wants to make out with Claudia, you guys. She puts the babe in Babysitter's Club. The emergency is that Dawn is going to California because her brother Jeff is in the hospital. She only needs to be there one, two days at most, but the school is giving her two weeks off. Wow. Either they're really generous or they're trying to get rid of her. The club can't function without Dawn, so Logan is forced to take her place as a full-time member. Logan skips football practice in order to babysit the Hobart boys. They have a great time playing bear fighters until Logan's football buddies show up. They make fun of Logan for babysitting instead of playing football. <laughs> Practicing sports is more important than making money. In the subplot, there is a health fair in town. Christy figures that the kids will be interested in going. Uh, has she met five-year-olds before? They don't care about health fairs. Christy volunteers to run a booth, even though babysitting has nothing to do with eating healthy. She makes a bunch of pamphlets with child safety tips. Marianne babysits Jenny Prezioso. They go to the school where Logan is practicing track. Jenny is loud and rowdy the whole time. She runs all around the bleachers, she screams, she jumps, and at one point she runs out onto the track and knocks everyone over. Logan is embarrassed by this, and I'm kind of mad at Marianne. Marianne, you're the babysitter here. Why aren't you taking control of Jenny? Logan babysits the Hobarts again. They have fun at the track, and they have a tickle fight. Of course, that's when the football guys show up. They say, Logan is a girl! They start calling him Lois Bruno! <laughs> and they make fun of him all week long! Oh, poor Logan. At the health fair, Chrissy gives out a lot of Babysitter's Club flyers. She's excited about all the new clients they're getting. And this makes no sense to me. The premise of this book is that the Babysitter's Club is so busy, the club will fail if just one member does something else. They're clearly way overbooked, so why do they need more clients? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Chrissy is just obsessed with the club, that's all. Logan takes the Hobarts to the health fair. The football guys show up and make fun of Logan again. Logan's so mad, he lets the children go to the bathroom by themselves. Oh no! Assuming children know how to use bathrooms? That's a terrible mistake! One boy gets distracted by a candy machine, while the other boy goes missing. Logan panics for a while. The lost child is quickly found, but Logan feels so bad about his bathroom failure, he quits the babysitter's club. That is a sentence I thought I would never say. Dawn comes back from California with a tan, which makes me think she was hanging out on the beach instead of watching her brother. Logan starts ignoring the football guys when they make fun of him, and pretty soon they stop insulting him altogether. At track tryouts, 
The Hobarts and the Babysitter's Club members cheer for Logan. He is so inspired, he makes the track team. And Football Jerk doesn't. The track guys quickly become best friends with Logan, especially when they learn that he's on a first-name basis with all the cute girls in the Babysitter's Club. Logan realizes he likes babysitting and being a ladies' man, so he rejoins the Babysitter's Club. The end. Post-book follow-up. I like this book, if only for the novelty of having a different narrator. I especially liked how the plot is unique to Logan. They couldn't do the storyline with one of the female narrators. That's good! The book is a little repetitive, though. All of the Hobart babysitting chapters are basically the same, as are the chapters where the guys make fun of Logan. Plus, the health fair stuff was boring. We didn't need three chapters of build-up for that. And yeah, we, we've seen the somebody temporarily quits the club storyline many, many times before. I wanted to see a chapter of Logan interacting with his family members because we rarely get to see them in the main series. Logan mentions that his father approves of his relationship with Marianne, but father disapproves of his babysitting. That's an interesting angle, which 100% fits in with the book's theme. I wanted to see it developed. But alas, whenever Logan hangs out with his family, it turns into generic, fun babysitting time. It's a lost opportunity. I think this book should have been book number 50. That would have been a nice way to celebrate the milestone of reaching 50 books. Maybe that was the original plan, as this was clearly written before they stopped doing two recap chapters per book. Plus, Logan and Marianne act like their big breakup was just a little while ago, when it was about 15 books ago at this point. Here's something odd. Uh, when the boy is lost at the health fair, he gets found by Football Jerk. He still openly insults Logan and the babysitters when he gives the child back, so there's a brief moment when he's nice, and then it gets forgotten immediately. I kinda wish the book had gone into that, too. Overall, this is an interesting book. The highlight is Logan's narration. His voice is well-developed. He doesn't sound like a clone of the other narrators. So yeah, good job! I give Babysitter's Club, Reader's Request, Logan's Story, an 8 out of 10.